Now we have Emmanuel Anthony standing by. He has been an FA Level 2 football coach for 13 years and also a Manchester United fan all the way from the UK. Good to have you with us. Good for having me this morning. How are you? I'm very well. I'm very well. How's it been going with you? It's been okay. Um, apart from yesterday's, not yesterday's, and Sunday's humiliating result <laughs> to our rivals, Chelsea. True. But let, let me ask you this question. I know um, when it comes to football and fan support for their various clubs, Arsenal fans have not had it easy since Asen Wenger, even before Asen Wenger left. Now, it seems like Manchester United fans are beginning to go through that. How does that make you feel? Um, I wouldn't say that we're in exact same transition as Arsenal are. I'll say, unfortunately, Arteta has done a fantastic job of late, but there is layers and foundations that haven't been put in place Unfortunately, I'll say by Arsene Wenger, that has left, um, uh, that's left Arteta with a, a mountain to build. But he's, he's a great coach. He's been stewarded by a phenomenal coach in Pep Guardiola, who I'm a massive fan of myself. But I'll say the foundation that Man United have had, they've still won major trophies over the past six years, whether it's the Europa League and the FA Cup. And yes, Arsenal won the FA Cup under Wenger, but they didn't win anything under the managers after that. All right, let's talk about uh, Manchester United now. Um, what would you say, um, what would be your um, reaction on the performance so far by the club this season, 2019-2020 season? I would say I think the hierarchy made a massive mistake in delaying getting a creative midfielder slash attacking midfielder um, in somebody as phenomenal as Bruno Fernandes. Um, somebody that we've been poaching and watching and scouting for the better part of the last two years. So for us to not get him last season, I don't believe Man United will be in a place they are in where we are now scrambling for a top four, where top four now has been deemed as a title when it's not. That should be a given. The Man United standard has always been high. So I think, unfortunately, the hierarchy have themselves to blame in that. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer understands that Rome wasn't built in a day. And as he says himself, he's always tried to take out the bad weeds in order to build the foundation where they have the identity and the Man United DNA of the way they would like to play and move forward. With that said, I believe that if we did have someone like Fernandez in earlier, we wouldn't have had to kind of um, d wait on people such as Jesse Lingard or Andreas Pereira, who have tried their best, but haven't showed the quality in order to be at that level. And to lose the likes of Pogba for long periods of time, Scott McTominay for a period of time, hasn't done us a world of good, including Rashford, who was also injured with a severe back injury for a period of time. But I believe we're on the up. Um, I believe the 19 wins, um, or sorry, the 19 unbeaten record, I should say, was a phenomenal feat and something that we could that can gain us with greater momentum. But we ran out of steam, and I believe there was many factors which I'd like to share of why we had that defeat to Chelsea. Oh. Now, yeah, talking about the, the defeat to Chelsea, a sad result for Manchester United fans. Um, but what would you say went wrong? Because I feel like um, Solskjaer got it wrong from the formation mm -hmm. and the lineup. I would say. If I have to be fair, I, I watched the very first game at the beginning of the season and I was probably one of a few people that was an advocate for um, Frank Lampard. Done a great job at Birmingham City, came in and they played phenomenally well against us. They hit the post. Their, their footballing style was phenomenal. I, I really, really enjoyed it. And I told people, don't be excited by that Man United win at Old Trafford at the beginning of the season. Because what Frank Lampard is building, with having had in the opportunity to bring in players, it shows that he's future focused and he's got something great. So for us to beat them four times on the trot, there was, there was always going to be a draw or a loss coming Man United's way. With that said, the formation that he put out, Frank Lampard and his team learned from those defeats and they matched us with that formation. One thing I think needs to also be said is that they've had 48 hours worth of rest. For a person that's coached for 13 years, just having 24 hours worth of rest on top of your um, opponent is also a great advantage, let alone 48 hours. And he had to tinker with the team because, yes, the Premier League is our bread and butter, but Champions League is also a financial factor, but also a place where all the fans want us to be in. So he had to tinker with his team. I, I felt that playing Rashford and Dan James wasn't the best combination, and he had to go for either change the front line completely or go with Rashford and Martial up top. So he had to tinker with his team. But one thing we learned as managers is that you can change your team as many times as you want. You, you live and die by the results. And if that's the team we put out, if they won it, it would have been like, oh, great, well done. If they didn't, this is the criticism that comes our way. And unfortunately, I'll say David De Gea hasn't looked the same 
And I believe two, if not all three of those goals, he could have played a major part in changing those results. Mm, true. You know, uh, there was something you said about um, the clubs, different goal clubs having different times to rest before a football game. Now, I had a conversation with a Manchester United fan in the office, and she also brought this up. And I said, come on, you are in England. Manchester United and Chelsea, they are both in England. Now, you consider the fact that a particular team goes, travels a long distance to play a Europa League game on Thursday and still comes back to the EPL and plays a football game on a Sunday. Um, so would you say this is one of the reasons why Manchester United lost that game against Chelsea, blaming it on fatigue? Because, hey, I, I wouldn't say that should be an excuse. I, I, I'm not exactly trying to bring excuses, but I'm trying to bring factors. And I can only speak from a professional coaching perspective as well as a fan. So we know that when it comes to elite sports, there are factors that come into play. That's why they say boxers need to make sure that you train and you rest. I'm a good fan of Dillian White. And we've been speaking often, and he's been speaking about the amount of um, excellence when it comes to training. Yeah. But when it's away from training, it's resting and recuperation. On top of that, we could see the games prior to that, particularly the Crystal Palace game. Man United, with their ideal first eleven, still looked deflated. And their passing was lethargic. And their football was pretty average. So to take that level of form and that style of play... Into, a, um, into an FA Cup game against one of your top rivals that is also an elite team, I think that comes into play as well as the personnel. Looking at our previous game against Norwich, you'll see that the personnel that we played in there, where we had a wholesome change, that team was terrible. Um, I, they, they didn't perform up to standard. Man United right now have a great first eleven, but our second team and our bench isn't up to scratch and isn't up to standard. And I thought that's why Solskjaer tried to team with that team knowing that you couldn't trust that team in its full entirety. But I do feel, even in our second team, somebody that should have played is Romero. Romero's been playing all of our tournament games. He's had a phenomenal record. I think he's only let in two goals all season. And for him not to play, I believe, was, was, a, was, a, was a poor managerial decision on Solskjaer's part. Yeah. Um, so, over time now, since my United States having poor run of form, um, two names have been in the news. Harry Maguire and the goalkeeper, now, let's talk about Maguire. Do, most people have said he is an 80 million scam. Do you agree with this? Because we've seen a lot of mistakes from um, Maguire since um, he, I think, this, the, the project restarts. Do you think this is true, that he was, he's not worth wearing the Manchester United jersey? He, so, I think it's, it's, us as humans and as fans, we're very quick to jump on a bandwagon. Mm. Harry Maguire, since I believe it's Gary Pallister, might be the first person to play almost 50 games or every single Premier League minute of this season and um, without literally missing a game or a minute at all. He's had, over two months, he had to have a, uh, uh, an injection in his hip in order to continue playing. Mm. Is Harry Maguire worth 80 million? No, but we understand the law of supply and demand in business and it also works in sports. The price was inflated. Leicester didn't have to sell. They had a lot of money in the bank. They were pressing on to try and get Champions League places. They didn't have to sell their best player. And then, therefore, we had to pay, pay top dollar for him. And there wasn't much option for us to pay for. I believe Harry Maguire is within the region of £60 million pounds at the max. Mm. So that £20 million pound premium is sometimes what Man United or other teams are willing to pay for in order to kind of get the top four or higher positions. So it's not worth that amount. But talking about Harry Maguire leading to mistakes, Harry Maguire so far statistically hasn't actually had a goal which has led to a, um, hasn't made a mistake that has led to a goal. It's either the ball's hit the post or it's come off with a good save. So he hasn't actually had that or an error leading up to a goal such as Van Dijk. But I believe that there are two different types of players. I think Virgil van Dijk is a supreme centre-back and if not the best centre-back in the world at the moment. But um, I don't believe Harry requires all of that ilk and of that standard and stature. But I do believe that when you look at his record in terms of headers won, interceptions, passes forward, he has made that. But we know that people are very, very quick to bring up highlight reels and snippets of the individual errors that a person has made leading into a game. All right, great one right, right there. Now, the last question as we go, I'll give you like a minute to talk about this now. Ojoni Gallo, the Nigerian superstar, the Nigerian striker, he said he wants to leave his dream right there at Manchester United. Yes, he made that dream move to United, but do you really think that he is living the dream at Manchester United, sitting on the bench, or should he have gone back to China to play regular first team football? 100% he's living the dream. If you ask anybody that has grown up being a Manchester United fan, whether you're on the bench, on the in the changing room, or on the field, you cannot compare a, a club in China 
and a club of the ilk and stature of Manchester United, with no disrespect to his, his, um, his mother team. But one of the things you have to understand in that, he understood coming into Igalo, and I have to raise my hand, I, was, I wasn't of the fashion of Igalo coming into Manchester United. Many of the fact that he hasn't have trained from all of December. He hasn't played in the Premier League for about two seasons, I believe, up until that point. And we understood that the Premier League has moved forward. But his goal record, and he's a phenomenal poacher, and he sniffs the goal. He's always cheerful. He's always motivated. And as we're talking about living the dream, the season isn't over. Europa League is still up for grabs. Top four is still up for grabs. He's still going to be going, staying here up until January which means that his salary hasn't changed. So he's still going to be making the money, whether he's in China or here, because it hasn't been a full transfer. It is just an extended loan. So financial-wise, he's still benefiting. To be around world-class players and world-class managers and to play in the Premier League, which the Premier League and the Spanish League and maybe the German League are still the major leagues you want to play in, it's a dream come true for him. And I, I believe any Manchester United fan that loves football or plays football would love to be in his shoes. Wow. Thank you very much for your analysis this morning, Emmanuel. Thank you for having me. All right. Please continue to stay safe out there. I will do. Thank you. God bless. God bless. Yes, uh, well, um, Emmanuel giving us a brilliant analysis, I must say, um, on Manchester United. And I know we are out of time and we really need to go. But I do hope that you enjoyed the package today because uh, that's a wrap.